Hello everyone and welcome to what I am calling the Father's Feast. This is uh, the very first video that I hope to be in a series of videos of recipes that I know and love and want to share with my family and friends. I have uh, four kids and my kids ask for my videos or ask, actually they ask for my recipes and um, I have given them a cookbook uh, but even though you may have a recipe, following a recipe without seeing how it's done uh, could be a little bit challenging. And so my good friend, Father David Probst, has um, uh, been asking me for my recipe for pizza dough. And so I have given that to him, uh, but since he has never made pizza dough before, um, I want to tell you and... Uh, that I'm going to make this video to show you exactly how it's done. Pizza dough, along with bread dough or any kind of bread dough, is very challenging. It's very easy to make because there are very few ingredients, but it's very challenging. In fact, this pizza dough only has four ingredients, flour, water, yeast, and salt. And although you have a recipe, bread doughs of any type, take a lot of experience to know how it looks, the right amount of ingredients, how it feels, has it been kneaded enough, the texture of it. Uh, all of that is important to a successful bread dough outcome. And so although I have been making pizza doughs for 30 years now, ever since the kids were very tiny, I learn something each and every time. And I watch a lot of YouTube videos about how to make pizza dough because what you learn one time, you'll improve the next. And you'll learn something the next time that you'll improve on the next time. And so I'm going to learn something about making pizza dough today too that I will incorporate, but it's an ongoing kind of process. And so what I have for you today is... Uh, uh, the recipe calls for two cups of flour. Now, the rule of thumb is one cup of flour makes one 10 to 12 inch pizza. Uh, I always like to make two pizzas because I make two pizzas. We have one for dinner and then we save one for lunch or perhaps dinner the next day. Um, so if you want just one pizza, you just half this recipe, but this recipe is for two 10 to 12 inch pizzas. So the recipe calls for a cup of bread flour and bread flour is um, available in, in, your, in, in your grocery stores and it is a high gluten flour which provides a lot of protein in the flour and the protein is what gives pizza that distinctive uh, texture and bite and chew. And then a cup of all purpose flour. You could make uh, the recipe with two cups of all-purpose flour, but I have found that the high gluten and the all-purpose flour combined really gives you that good pizzeria kind of texture and fill. And so, to begin, I'm going to take three-quarter cup of cold tap water. And the recipe that I'm showing you now is a recipe in which we make the dough, let it rise for two hours. After it is doubled in size in two hours, we're going to take the dough out, cut it in two, and form two dough balls, and let them rise covered for two more hours. And then we will put them in a container covered and stick them in the refrigerator for at least 24 hours, or you can use them up to five or six days. Now, if you would... Uh, uh, if, if you would like to make your pizza dough the same day, uh, you would need to add water that is, a, that is lukewarm, about 110 to 120 degrees, because the warmth of the water helps the yeast activate faster and quicker, and it'll get a quicker rise. And so you can make pizza dough the very same day to use it in about two to three hours but I highly recommend using the long cold fer fermentation because um, as it sits in the refrigerator longer and longer, it starts to ferment and get almost like a sourdough and the taste and the texture of it as it sits in the refrigerator just gets better and better and better. And so I'm gonna put three quarter cups of cold water in here for the cold water method. And then you have to stir in one 
teaspoon of salt. I am using kosher salt out of my gourd salt container and one teaspoon put in and then you stir it and dissolve it. So you keep stirring it and it's a little bit harder for salt and sugar and things like that to dissolve in cold water. So you just keep stirring it and the motion of the water will eventually dissolve all of the water. I mean all of the salt. And it's just about all dissolved. Okay. Then what you do is you combine the two flours together. That's the all-purpose flour and that is the bread flour and I will mix those two together and then what you do next is you take one-third of the flour that you have just mixed and you pour it in the salt water. So I'm going to just eye this about a third of the content of the flour there and that looks about to be about a third and then you stir it stir it until it becomes like a very thin very thin pancake batter and the reason why you do that is that if you add salt and yeast directly with each other um, that has a tendency uh, to thwart the activation of the yeast and so by doing this you dilute it and the yeast will work much much better for you okay so that is a a very thin batter so what I will do is I will add the remaining flour And then I'm going to add the yeast. I will add a half a teaspoon of yeast. Uh, you can buy the active dry yeast that comes in the packets in the grocery stores. That's fine. Just make sure that you measure out a teaspoon. Uh, the rule of thumb in good pizza dough is the less yeast, the better. And particularly when you're doing these cold rises, these cold proofs in the refrigerator for several days, um, you wanted to use as little a uh, yeast as possible. Um, I buy yeast by the bulk at Sam's. It comes in a big old uh, commercial type block that's vacuum packed. Um, I keep it in a plastic bag. I open it up. I keep it in a plastic bag in the refrigerator and it keeps forever. But I make so much pizza dough. I make pizza dough once maybe twice a week uh, as well as other breads and, and, and so I go through uh, yeast fairly quickly. So then what you do is take your your half a teaspoon and then add it in there and then in my beautiful disco mixer uh, you will attach the kneading hook and you'll turn it on low to medium speed until it incorporates into a ball. Now, if you don't have a disco mixer like mine or a mixer of any type, you can do this all in a bowl. And so at this point, what you would do is you'd take a wooden spoon or some spoon and incorporate it until it works uh, into just a rough ball where all of the flour, the dry flour, has been absorbed by the moisture of the uh, water. Uh, or you can use your hands um, as well. But I love my disco mixer. And so I will, I have it turned on slow speed. And I'll use my silicone spatula because as this thing uh, turns, it pushes the dry yeast up on the side. And so as it uh, begins to incorporate the wet with the dry, I'll I'll uh, carefully kind of uh, push that dry flour around the edges toward the center so that it can get incorporated really, really well. But at this point, we aren't going to do the kneading of the dough yet. We just want to incorporate everything together into a rough ball and then we will let it sit in the bowl as it is, uncovered, 
for about 30 minutes. And then after 30 minutes, we'll come back and then we'll knead it for seven to 10 minutes. I'm gonna let the mixer knead it for the majority of that time, then I will take it out and I will knead it on the counter here. So you can see here, hopefully you can see how that's now forming a dough ball, it's a rough dough ball. The loose flour is, uh, that's sitting on the bottom is starting to uh, all get incorporated. And so that's looking very good. So what we have now, I'm gonna shut it off, is a rough ball of dough. So I'm gonna let that set for 30 minutes. And then when we come back, I'll show you how to knead it and get ready for its first rising. Okay, our dough has been resting in the bowl for 30 minutes now. And so now it's time to knead it for about seven to 10 minutes. I'm gonna let the disco mixer do all the work here, the majority of the work. Uh, if you don't have a mixer, this is the point where you would put it on your uh, counter and you would put your heel of your hands into it and push into it and fold it back over the heel of your hands into it and pull it over and push it forward and just keep that going over and over for about seven to 10 minutes. It's a great way to get some exercise, uh, but the Dixo, Disco Mixer is gonna do it for me here. So as you can see, I'm gonna let it do a, a, good, um, a good kneading there for about seven to 10 minutes. And then after that time, I will come back and show you how to get it ready for the first proof. Okay, it has been kneading now for about uh, 10 minutes, and so I'm gonna turn it off. And as you can see, very, very smooth dough. It's a little bit sticky, which is exactly what you want. Now, if you'll notice on here, it, it's sticky, but it doesn't stick to the countertop. So this is exactly the texture. And this is what I was talking about. The experience with working with bread dough really, um, you know, it takes time to learn what that looks like and what this feels like. And so I can tell you from experience that this is exactly where I want the dough to be at this point. So this is where I will continue to knead it. And, and as I told you, the way you knead it is you put the heel of your hand and you push against it and roll it through, and then I fold it back over and do it again. And fold it back over in the heel of your hand, fold it back over the heel of your hand and just do that back and forth. And once you do it, see you don't need any flour. If, if your dough is, is too wet and it's sticking to the surface of the countertop, then by all means get some extra flour and you can dust, you can dust the uh, countertop with just a little bit extra flour so that it doesn't stick. And so you just push into that extra flour. But I didn't need to do that. I'm just showing you that for demonstration purposes. But you just keep kneading back and forth. And I can tell you, it, it, uh, people say that it feels like a baby's bottom. That's exactly what it feels like. It, it's so smooth. And I can tell that the glutens are forming in there and the proteins are, are taking hold. And as I said, once we get this smooth, I'm gonna put it in a uh, bowl pour a little bit of olive oil into the bowl to coat it so that it, the uh, dough doesn't stick. And we're gonna put a, this dough ball into the glass bowl. We're gonna cover it and then let it rise at room temperature for about two hours. So this dough is getting just about right where I want it to. And as you see, I'm kind of pushing it into the flour on the counter just to use up that flour that I put on there and it gets incorporated into it. And 
once I get that flower, that feel that that extra flower is incorporated into it, and it starts to get a little stick, then I will form the dough ball. Okay, we're just about ready. So the way you form a dough ball is you take it with two hands and you start tucking it on the underside in all the way around the underside in all the way around and then I pinch the bottom together and look at that look how smooth look how smooth that dough ball is and so form it into a ball and then I'm going to take my bowl that I'm going to use I've got some extra virgin olive oil just pour just just a dab into it. And then I'll take my hand and spread it all around the edges of the bowl because you want it around the edges because as it starts to rise, you don't want it to stick to the edges of the bowl. And look at that beautiful, beautiful dough ball. That is gorgeous. So I'll put it in there like that. I'll take some saran wrap. cover up this bowl loosely. You can use a damp uh, towel or anything just to cover it. But I'll cover it up loosely. Look at that. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And then I'll set it over here and we'll be back in two more hours to divide the dough ball in half, make two more dough balls, um, put them in containers and cover them and let them rise for two more hours before we stick them in the refrigerator. We'll come back and see you okay, then. Okay, we're back and it's been two hours and this dough has been rising in this bowl covered uh, for two hours now. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out, I'm going to divide it in two and I've got two containers here that what you do is you can put it in a bowl um, I've just got these plastic bowls that I keep my pizza dough in. And so what I do is I just spray the inside real quick. Just give it a quick spray. And then, look at that. Man, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. That is absolutely gorgeous. And so what you do here is... I've got me what this is called a uh, pastry knife uh, or a, a dough knife. Uh, it cuts through dough really, really well without sticking. And so I'm going to divide this in two. And so, come on, baby. Come on. Come on. There you go. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of eye it and cut it about in two here. And then I'm going to form two balls just like I showed you before where you tuck the bottom under oh this feels so good and look at that gas bubble already forming on top there this is going to be good so you turn the bottom in with both hands and you keep turning it in pushing it up in the middle pushing it up in the middle until you get this soft beautiful dough ball again Pinch it off at the bottom. Pitch it off at the bottom. Look at that beautiful, beautiful piece of dough. And make a, make a ball, twirl it. Same thing with this one. Just keep folding it in and turning it around. I just turn it as I fold it in. I'm folding in the sides, down, up, underneath, and just tucking it in under the bottom, pushing the middle out. And this beautiful dough is forming here. Again, I pinch off the bottom. Give it a good slam to seal that pinch. Roll it around, form that dough. And there you have two gorgeous dough balls that I'll just put in here like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover these and these will set out for an additional two hours 
and they'll rise within these tubs. And then once they uh, have risen for two hours, I will um, stack them on top of each other, uh, put them in the refrigerator, and maybe four to six days from now, we will have some lo lovely, lovely pizza. And so that's what you do. Um, coming up next, we will, I have some extra dough balls. So we're going to take the dough balls out and show you how to make the final pizza. So we'll, we'll be right back. Okay, now the pizza uh, balls have been covered and they have been put in the refrigerator and they will stay in there. This is Saturday. Uh, they will stay in there until sometime of the middle of next week and we will have pizza then. But in the meantime, I have two pizza dough balls here that have been in the refrigerator for four days. And so we will use these. They have, they have been covered and what you do you take some flour and kind of generously put some flour onto the countertop. In the meanwhile, I have uh, got my grill going and I've got a pizza stone on the grill and right now it's approaching 600 degrees. Uh, do it really hot and fast on the grill. If you uh, don't have a grill, and uh, you can do it on a charcoal grill, a gas grill, you can do it in your oven. Uh, just turn your oven up to 500 degrees, and if you don't have a pizza stone, you need to invest in one. They, are, they aren't expensive, and if you're going to be cooking pizzas or breads or anything like that, you really need, need one. So you see that bubble right there on top of there? That means it's got some good gas action going on. And so I'm just going to take it and flip it over, get flour on both sides, and then kind of shape it into a round circle. And then what I'm going to do is with my fingers, I'm going to start on the edge here, and I'm just going to start pushing going forward. going Just pushing, 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 pushing. And then I'll pick it up, get some more flour on it, get some more flour up under there, then I'll turn it the other way, and I'll start on one end, and then I'll start pushing, pushing, pushing. Remember, you're only wanting to make a 10 to 12 inch pizza. And so I'll turn it again, once again, start pushing, pushing, pushing out. I'll do it another quarter of a turn, pushing, pushing. Okay, now when it gets about this size, this is getting close to a 10 inch size, I am going to start stretching the pizza. And so what I put my hand right here, I will grab the pizza right here and I'll just kind of stretch. And then I'll turn it and I'll grab the pizza right here and I'll kind of stretch. And I'll grab the pizza right here and turn it with those fingers and I'll kind of stretch and get that good good circular form exactly like you want in a good pizza and one more time just stretch right here like that and that has got about the shape that I want the size I want okay now what I have here is I have some tomato sauce that I have made and Tomato sauce is very easily to make. What all, the only thing I did was got a can, just a regular can of tomato sauce. I put it in a sauce pot, added a little bit of sugar. You, you always have to add a little bit of sugar to tomato products because tomatoes have a lot of acid in them. And so a little sugar, salt, pepper, garlic powder, a little bit of onion powder, and some dried basil. And I simmered it down to where I kind of got some of the moisture out. And... Um, it is fantastic. But remember when you're topping a pizza, when you're topping a pizza, less is more. Uh, you don't want to overload it. So I'll take this and spread it around all the way to the edges. It's going to take a couple of spoonfuls. And I'll spread it around all the way to the edges. I forgot to get my mozzarella out. I'll get it here in just a second. I'm going to use some fresh mozzarella, and I, I 
I have found that I really love it. There's a, you know, any good pizza place you go to, there's one in Atlanta called Antico, and they use fresh mozzarella. Nakuchi Tavern here in town uses fresh mozzarella, but they don't cover the whole pizza with mozzarella, you know, like you get at Papa John's or something like that. Oh, that's great. So perfect. So what I'm going to do is make a pizza margarita, which is just tomato sauce, mozzarella cheese, and fresh basil. But while I was at Aldi, they had some beautiful mushrooms. And so I sauteed some mushrooms in clarified butter, um, some olive oil with some garlic powder, salt and pepper, and we'll do that. So here is some fresh mozzarella. And all I'm going to do is just pinch off some pieces to put around all over the pizza like that. Just all over, you kind of, kind of sticks to your fingers, but you just kind of push it off. Uh, Antico, one of the best pizzas I've ever had, they only had four spots that they put uh, the mozzarella in, and it, it was absolutely amazing. Okay, now that's plenty there. We'll take some of these sauteed cremini mushrooms that I sauteed. Uh, the, and, and I leave them in big chunks. I don't cut them up too small because I like to bite in and get that. These uh, portobello, baby portobello mushrooms, they have a good meaty texture to them. So I do that like that. And then in our garden, we have fresh basil. So Patty went out and picked some fresh basil. So I'm going to sprinkle some fresh basil over it just like that and then we're about to take it outside and put it on the grill okay that looks lovely lovely let me take my pizza peel I'm gonna put it up under here like this and then scoop it real quick and then I can stretch it to how it needs to be Perfect, absolutely, just perfect. Okay, now to take it out, and I kind of shuffle it like that, shuffle it just to make sure it moves on there. So now, outside to take the pizza, put it on the grill. Okay, what I got here is I got my grill good and hot. Right now, it's registering almost 650 degrees, so this is going to be hot and fast. And so first, you don't open it up all the way. You got to kind of burp it, make sure that you don't get a flashback. Okay, got that pizza stone that's good and hot. So I'll take this. So I'm going to slide it right off on the pizza stone, and it's going to be done in no time at all. All right, this pizza has been on here for about four minutes. It is, it is hot and fast. This, this oven, uh, not oven, this uh, grill is at 650 degrees. So look at that. Look at that. Yes, sir. -y. She is done. Okay, look at that. Doesn't that look absolutely delicious? Okay, this is the second pizza that we have made. And if you noticed on here, it is just cheese, uh, tomato sauce, cheese, and the mushrooms. We're going to put the uh, basil on after it comes off. Just a little twist on that. So just a big scoop right there like that reposition it on the peel easy to do easy to do and we are off to the grill okay this pizza here just came off and it was on the grill this is our second pizza it was on the grill for um, three and a half minutes uh, it is beautifully done and the way I'm going to finish it off this one is the first one we made this is the one we're going to eat tomorrow but this is the one we're going to eat right now. So I'm going to finish it off. I'm going to take some extra virgin olive oil. And I'm just going to kind of sprinkle it around on here. And then 
I've got some uh, Reggiano Parmigiano that I am going to grate lightly over the top. As you know, Reggiano Parmigiano, it is the king and queen of Parmesan cheeses. And then take some finely chopped basil and sprinkle it all over. And that, my friends, is one wonderful pizza. God bless you.